Buckle up, this is gonna be a doozy. What is going on? I'm Zedmot, that is Zedmot in your creator boost in every Supercell game under the sun. We're gonna do all of the boom things today. It is Friday, so I figured, you know what? Let's do some stuff. Now, this is my warship. We're gonna start here. I did the dumb thing. I did the dumb thing. So if we have a look at my log, last attack was 11 hours ago. At that 11 hour mark, we got troop damage. That is a significant push point. Obviously, you're going to be faster than you were before simply by getting troop damage. I think I said troop damage before, might have said troop health. Regardless, we are going to jump in now and see if I can't get away from the cusp of that diamond. Uh, just almost falling out of diamond every single time. And I had a couple people ask, why are you using rifles instead of heavies? That is a mistake that many, many people make in operation attacks, in PvP, in lots and lots and lots of things. So the reason why you use rifles instead of heavies is if there are single shot defenses. If there were more mortars, sorry, if there were more boom cannons and cannons and sniper towers towards the front here, I would use riflemen. Instead, they've got lots and lots of splash. That is flamethrowers and mortars and machine guns. I don't know if machine guns actually do splash, but you get the basic idea. So that, my friends, is why you choose to use war heavies or riflemen. Hopefully, that is very, very obvious to all of you. Also, hopefully what is obvious is why I'm dropping these heavies on that diagonal. You get a nice, nice, nice path by doing so. Getting your heavies on that diagonal means you get a little bit more coverage and you get a little bit more separation, which means that you're not going to lose nearly as many troops all at once. Pretty darn nice. Now, that Doom Cannon is not in range yet. You can see it is pointed away, but you can see also see it's going to start to get in range pretty darn soon. So we're going to get some second wind action. We are going to get some troops spreading on out. Might as well do a second, second wind. Now, you know what? I'm just going to BART out that Doom Cannon because we've already, already got to go over that far left hand side. Should have brought some seekers, snuck them along that wall, but instead we're just gonna rely on our troops to clear all the way through this. Might as well get rid of that shock launcher as well. They've already retreated. We've already picked up the win. Clearly our troop damage, doing great things on the defensive side, which makes zero sense whatsoever, clearing all the mines, and now we can simply flare on over into here, ignoring, you know what, let's shock that machine gun just in case we can get some of our dudes out front, and by dudes I mean need to get some of those riflemen and heavies in front of those boom cannons or we're going to have a really, really bad time. As those things are in the air, we're going to flyer, flare that second one, melt not fully warmed up. It is morning. I am still sipping on my first cup of Joe. Never called it Joe in my life. Calling it, it's coffee. Only getting nine stars because they were a little bit lower down. Death Nov Gorod. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I don't know where the syllables start and end, but GG, Mr. Death, Mrs. Death, whoever you may be getting into a six engine room base. Now you'll notice this six engine room base has three shock launchers. I do not have three shock launchers. So that is gonna be my first issue at hand here. Next, do I go left or do I go right? I feel like going left, there are fewer defenses and fewer shock launchers right away. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, because this ramp is so darn long, we can wait a little bit longer. And they've got lots of mortars over here. So again, we're going to go with two boats of heavies. We're going to drop our heavy on that far left-hand side. I am not going to use a flare. Heavies are going to go left, then they're going to curve into the right. Next up, we can do the same thing on this side. I know people out there are cringing, saying you should be using a flare. I probably should be, to be completely honest, but sometimes... Uh, you just got to mix it up. Letting those heavies get shot in the face. And now we're going to send our next set of rifles over to that far left, hoping they can clear some of those mines. Bringing Kavan over to the far right, trying to get a decent spread. We've got all of our right boat of heavies. We've got most 
of our left side of heavies dead, so not the greatest on that. See, that's exactly what we were after. Waste those mines with our silly, silly rifle dudes. Next up, need to shock that doom cannon. Also shocking all of the things that are gonna destroy the majority of our rifles. Don't really have a lot of concerns there at the moment. Let's get some more second wins. Keep some of our bombardiers on that left-hand side alive. And as soon as that, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that boom cannon. Might seem like a waste, but ah, oh, didn't even get rid of it. So it definitely was a waste. Next on the agenda. Uh, let's second wind one more time. Troop damage doing good things for us, but not great things at the moment. I am not getting great splits here. Uh, typically, I would be barting out one of those engine rooms, but the fact that our troops are right in the middle, hopefully helping us, we haven't lost yet. That timer, so confusing to so many people. Just because they're done doesn't mean we've lost. We tend to do a little bit too much gabbing on this channel, which means that I probably spent 5, 10, 11, 12 seconds talking, which means we still had a bit of a chance, probably not, but we're over two minutes. Anytime you're over two minutes against a dirty, dirty six engine room base, you're doing all right. What did Bob show up with us? See, told you, it looked like we had lost, but you'd never give up hope. Keep fighting till the very, very end. Picking up that win over two minutes just thanks to that troop damage. Now you'll notice that I barely, actually you know what? I've got lots and lots. For some reason I did the math thinking that I was only going to get 340. I thought I was down maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, anyways, so we are going to max out that troop damage going on into that troop damage. Super, super useful. And next up, medkits. Medkits are super, super tempting. They, a couple people have commented saying medkits are super, help, super helpful this season. I haven't been using them enough. Um, now, my next node... Probably not going to be bullet. Cron Howard commented, shout out to join at own risk. Cron Howard, thank you for the comment, saying, unless you're going to use bullet and seekers, you're probably not going to go through bullet. So it does make sense. That hot pot right there and GBE on the way to seven probably make the most sense. And it seems like every time I think this season is almost over, I look up at the timer, nine days left. So lots and lots of time to get into seven. So Going through the hot pot probably makes the most sense through that GBE, which is going to be super helpful for barting out engine rooms. If you don't know what BART means, barrage plus artillery combined, doesn't mean you have to use both. It just means use your GBE. Anyways, um, so the fact that I'm going to get that choice node next in two chests means that I can go back and spend a little bit on my medkits, but... I haven't been using medkits, so I'm going to just stay put where I'm at for now. We'll do one more battle. Should get at least a five, maybe a six, which will get us that chest. I have not been playing unless I have a chest ready, which is not super duper smart. Quick note, this is the first time I have seen rocket launchers at six. You know they're coming. All those players that spent all those keys to go back and get rocket launchers, which by the way was a lot, lot they are coming to six soon, which is why you try and get to seven or that extra GBE or the troop damage. They also have boom mines and flamethrowers. Wow, they went back and got everything. And notice though they only have 50% of each of the things. We are at 100% of all of the things. They also don't have any gunboat energy. So they're going to be a little bit on the slower side. What are we going to do? I am going to flare to you. We are going to drop our heavies over here just to make sure that we've got good coverage. We are also going to drop our rifles over here. Rifles should protect us from that sniper tower in a second as soon as that puppy goes down. And then I'm just going to come all the way up this right hand side. Might be a little bit on the silly side as far as planning goes, but I feel like we should be able to get in and amongst those things. Now, how do we deal with you? We're going to shock that rocket launcher. Our heavies were a little bit late. Now we need to get Kavon with those guys. Decent spread here. I think I'm going to bart out this one, though. By barting out that engine room right there, I think that's going to give us a better angle to get to the rest of the things. 
and now we just need to throw that difficult shock missed the rocket launcher that was okay as long as we didn't miss that doom cannon that was my number one goal now all of these mines along this side are going to be a massive problem um kavon give us some troops i have not faced a doom cannon like uh, with rocket launchers so making all sorts of mistakes here now we just need to get away from that Doom Cannon as fast as we can, get rid of that Rocket Launcher, and now hope that Kevi Kavon can bring us some sort of value. There we go. Getting those troops out. I wish there was not a GBE ability to cancel a flare. Obviously, you can cancel a flare by flaring onto a building, but that's not what I'm after in this instance. What I really, really want is the ability to stop your flare from actually even happening, which would be super, super useful. Um, let's kamikaze that, see if we can't get that puppy down. Shock mine gonna be a problem there, but we should have enough bombardiers chucking that we can get this down at a reasonable time. It's gonna be close. I didn't talk nearly as long that time, but we shall see. Defense versus offense. I don't know what flag that is. Someone out there is going to let me know. Oh, we're way ahead. So troop damage. We had way, way, way more offensive boost than them. Even on the defensive side, I am sitting here with 100% building health, 100% building damage. They only had 50% of each. We have 100% troop damage and 100% troop health. So getting farther into that tree, making all the difference. Maybe in the long term, once they catch up, They'll be able to have a lot more boosts with those rocket launchers, but for now, definitely doing fairly well. Should I be pushing to 22 right now? By the looks of the log, yes. By the looks of the bo boosts, also yes. But instead, we are going to switch gears here. We are going to jump to the Zedmod account. This is spelled the way that it's meant to be spelled. The one that we were on before is just phonetically, I think that word is. And we are going to use incinerators. Now, if you are not using incinerators, you are probably making a mistake. Yes, they blow up spectacularly less. Yes, they lose health every second they're alive because they start out on fire. But that is perfect because 16 of them, 16 candles, they're all lit up. There's some great video name there that I just don't have available to me. I don't have instant training on this account for some reason. So we're going to jump over here, throw creator code boost in there. If you're wondering what that does, every dollar you spend, I get about a penny if my code is in your shop. Pick up that trader crate. By the way, trader crate, the order is known. If that is a surprise to you, do let me know in the comments. The fact that this is a four means the next one's either going to be an eight or absolute garbage. The fact is that's an eight, which means that we're going to have to go approximately 26 more crates before we get another eight. We'll have to go 13 more before we get another four, which means the next 11 to 12 chests are going to be absolute trash as displayed by that right there. So do hit me up in the comments if that is a surprise to you or if you have any questions. Instant training has been purchased. Candles have been lit. Now, we're going to go ahead and bring bullet just because why the heck not. If you're wondering what the plan is, it is complex. Complex solo is the goal. You'll notice that if we get rid of a bunch of these boom cannons, we can get behind core and do magical things. Don't have to care about that rocket launcher. So we can simply... Oh, we have speed serum too. The magic is here. That is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. That is the best adjective I could come up with because the fact is, Speed Serum is the bee's knees. That is the absolute creme de la creme. I love Speed Serum. I assume you guys all do too. Speed Serum probably, actually no, guaranteed, is one of the top three GBE abilities. And why we're using incinerators instead of scorchers, you might be asking. Well, let's be honest here. No GBE to deploy. You could never do this unboosted with scorchers. There is simply too much GBE at play here. And now this is where we're going to skip that final, final, um, what is that called? Smoke. We are going to drop our speed serum on all of these troops. And then we're going to flare onto 
some form of a boom cannon. Need to get all of this stuff down. Need to get some shocks out there. Need to get some taunts out there. Get those troops back over into here. Why we're going left with these puppies is simply because of the fact that there are somewhere underneath all of that carnage there were some boom cannons i don't know if there's any left or not let's throw a smoke to get our troops the heck away from that their shock launcher and now just let these puppies burn all of the things flared a couple seconds early unfortunately there is that one boom cannon lurking in the shadows that one sniper tower is getting some damage in and amongst our scorcher dudes but Let's be honest here. These incinerators are just so, so insane. They're burning up that core. They're also losing health at the same time, though. If we zoom in, some of those back ones are not getting hit by anything, and their health is going down. There is a little bit of free gunboat energy that we can throw onto that sniper tower. Come on, sniper tower. By the way, this task force is join at own risk. I was calling myself a guest here. They gave me crap for that. So I am a member of this task force. I am one of many, many, many players in this task force. I am not, this is not my task force, if that makes any sense. The Triangle Nine group of task forces is where I am the leader. Here I am just another brick in the wall or whatever the heck cliche you want to throw that way. Trying to get the unboosted solo on complex. I would use Zookas on this 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, but in this instance, we had the perfect storm here. Incinerators are only here for the week. They are super, super fun. You should be using them. Have a look for things like this where you can use them in attacks that you would never use them in. You would... Complex is done the same way almost every time in most task forces. Sneak in some... Uh, incinerators back there. Definitely, definitely a fun little twist on things. Um, one other thing to be aware of is with these guys, it is pretty darn important to have troop health. You see people trying to do four, only curtain call today. What is going on? Join at own risk. That should be dead end. That is costing some diamonds. That is odd, odd, odd. Only curtain call. Here I was telling you it was dead end, but right there, that statue right there making incinerators so much better. I know many people who use Zookas don't use troop health. I have at least one troop health on nine out of ten of my accounts. I don't know if I actually have nine or ten, but um, making all the difference. It's a little bit wonky underneath that timer there. If we pull it down, I think we can. Nope, we can't. Extra 14,000 health making a big, big, big difference. And this account's warship is very, very parked. It's been parked for about 10 days or so. I wish there was a timer where you could show how long you've been parked. So we can't show this one, but we can jump into this one. Now, for those of you who are unaware, that name in that top left-hand corner, way, way up there, where's my drawer? Um, way, way up there. That is a URL. Throw that in your browser. You will get to all sorts of good stuff. Now, this account was kicking butt at the two engine room level, was kicking butt at the three engine room level, do not have instant training, which means we go through troops very quickly. And if you're just trying to farm chests, going to four is not a good idea without instant training, unless you're going to get into like heavy bombardier or something like that. But for me, using just seekers, bad, bad things happen. Not getting all the engine rooms all that often, definitely doing it somewhat frequently, but all we have amongst our troops are this old attack strategy, which you probably recognize from like the first week of the season or something along those lines. So we are going to send all of our seekers up that right hand side and that left hand side trying to do some form of a combo attack. Now, Brick went and died directly after we used our gunboat energy. Of course, it was after we used our gunboat energy. I was holding her ability for as soon as we got to that shock mine did not work out, which means this attack is going to go even worse than it was before, which means we're going to probably only get two engine rooms. It's going to be ugly. That is how this season has gone for low level accounts that now this account is engine room locked. Not a good thing at all. 
keep telling Supercell, no, I want you guys to weigh in on this. This is my season idea. I want the season to be called Open Season. I then want Supercell to give out instant, not instant training, to give out the Admiral's Key so everyone has all of the engine rooms. That way you're not engine room locked. Admiral's Key for everyone, that's going to get more players moving up into the 5, 6, and 7 engine room levels. It's going to get more players in the matchmaking pool. That way you're not stuck down here at the four engine room level. They have never done a sale on the Admiral's Key. They've never explained the Admiral's Key. $3.99, come on. It should get cheaper as the season goes on maybe, or maybe start it out cheap and make it more expensive as the season goes on. Just do something with that Admiral's Key, pretty, pretty please. Now, as far as task forces go, this is our most accessible task force. Don't care what your statues are. Don't care what troops you use. We, as you can see right here by the stats, we do curtain call every single day, every stinking single day, which means 27 diamonds every day. The only requirements are you have to chat, you have to get intel, and you have to get operation attacks. If you do two of those three things, you are laughing, you fit perfectly. Now, I know it looks like we have we have 50 out of 50 people. Generally, at least one of those people is not meeting our requirements. So if you hit me up in chat, I will go through the number of people we've got there and clean up matters a little bit, get you a spot. So uh, this one, where do we go? Where are you going to reach? I think we're going to go all Seekers on this one because why the heck not? Seekers can go two on that, two on that. Yeah, let's go like this. We're going to go one, two here. We're going to go one, two there. And then we are going to go something over in this neighborhood and hoping, hoping, hoping that we can get all of these engine rooms down just using those troops. Even if we get two, even if we get three, should be able to bart out the rest. Just need Brick to give us a little bit of value there. Getting those Seekers along that back wall is not happening ugly attack yet again, but GBE coming in super, super handy here. Come on, come on, down you go, engine room. There is three. Now we can throw a couple barrages back here, couple artilleries back here, and hope that we get enough GBE did not. Like I said, go into four engine rooms at this stage in the season as a low level engine room locked. Not the best idea, not the best idea at all. We can not fill our ships anymore. So you gotta start subbing things in, putting some bombardiers in, making some different attacks. Not ideal whatsoever. Okay, next up, another link.bio account. We are gonna jump into Hog, which is the task force run by oh so growly. 1800 victory points almost, just crushing things. Are you on the leaderboard? You must be. Where does 1800 rank? Yeah, so sitting on that leaderboard, number 30 global. I am a guest in this task force. There are a bunch of beast players in this task force. For example, you might recognize Jamar. Where are you at, Jamar? Jamar also has his own YouTube channel, does some beastly, beastly crab things. So go do check him out. Did that just say three diamonds to change troops? I don't think we have any sort of... Maybe I just glossed over that bit. Anyways, uh, I only have six powder on this account. I'm sorry, 13 powder on this account. We are going to boost up a tiny bit just to make sure that we are a little bit more powerful. Then we are going to get rid of Everspark. Definitely don't want Everspark for an operation attack. We're going to jump into Java and Java... I do Javanese a little bit differently than most people. Boom mine. Okay, that is the most important part. Making sure that level 20 mine is not a level 25 mine. Otherwise, bad things happen. Now, getting rid of the boom mine. Step one. Step two, clearing this front a little bit. Why are we clearing the front? Getting extra gunboat energy. If you are trying to do unboosted attacks, Always, always load one boat of bombardiers. Look how much gunboat energy we're going to get. We're going to clear this entire front. That's going to save us at least one smoke. Getting all of that stuff down. And then we'll just let those bombardiers die. Time-wise, if you're trying to do 
any sort of walk on a operation attack, you probably want to leave at the two minute mark at the very, very, very latest one minute 45, especially if it's a beefy core. Now this is massive attack. So that core probably has in the neighborhood of 2 million health, I would guess. It is only a 158 base, which means it is lower health. If you don't know what 158 means, it just means the lower the number of power cells, the lower the health is going to be, um, especially if it's like a 158 humble pie or something like that. So look at this. We are farming that entire, entire front, absolutely destroying all the things. And we have tons of time left. Those critter launchers would have been a complete pain had our troops peeked out of the smoke somewhere. And now we just need to let these guys die. I would typically flare them somewhere to let them die a little bit quicker. But as you can see here, they're dying pretty darn good on their own. We'll get that final cannon down. And now those guys are destined to go die. So what we're going to do is we're going to flare over into here. That bombardier will be on a slightly different path than the rest of our Zookas. And now this is where I do it old school. Like this is full on old school style. Now, probably people are probably saying, hey, you probably should have used one boat of bombardiers. We've got 204 gunboat energy. Uh, that just tells me I can do all sorts of stuff towards that back. This is where I go old school, flaring in that far, far, far back corner, doing the javelin flare as first brought on by Savage Warrior, old school boom beach videos, probably one of the first and best boom beach YouTubers. I know there's the Ben Tim and the Nick at Nights and all of that, but come on. Savage Warrior was the true OG superstar as far as strategy goes. Yes, the other guys were entertaining and whatnot, but come on. Uh-oh. Losing my flare. I lost my flare. We are in trouble. What happened there was I went to look for the same spot. I always throw my flare and those buildings are a little bit wonky on that right hand side. So definitely, definitely in a bit of a bind here. One, two shocks or flares or smokes or whatever the heck those things are called. Now, many of you are probably triggered by the fact that there is no uh, I have not thrown a med kit yet. That is fine with me. We're going to throw our shocks first. One, two, three, and then we're going to get that right there out. Now, speed serum and battle orders, not the best choice in the matter, but look at that. We've got lots and lots of GBE left. We can throw another shock and another smoke. And if you're looking for where to throw that shock right there. It is right there, right dead center where the green meets the gray. You can hit that shock to me is one of the easiest shocks in Boom Beach. They call it a hard shock, but just not a big deal whatsoever. Didn't probably need to boost those statues, but the reason why I boost those statues is because anytime you're doing a long walk, like if you're walking to the back of Conifold and you screw up, I don't know how many Zuka players were in this task force. So that just means I have left some health in the core, which means that players are going to have to clear through all of this crud and it's just going to waste more attacks by doing that. That's why I boost a little bit in task forces, especially where I am a guest. Um, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose that we should do some PVP just to round it out. We've done trader, we've done chests, we've done warships. We need to get our submarine diving. Uh, I am not going to be doing imitation game. Imitation game. I am boycotting imitation game. I don't like imitation game. Supercell, please, please fix imitation game. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about as far as imitation game goes, imitation game in my mind is completely broken. Seven stages, no critter launchers. How long ago were critter launchers added? Months and months. They're not there, which means that Imitation game is an imitation of an event. It is stuck in the past. It, I miss when people used to have names on there. So imitation game doesn't have a lot of resources and I don't really care. So we're just going to skip that. Supercell, please fix that. We will just jump. In. Oh, of course someone's online. Raptor 97. By the way, Raptors just eliminated from the playoffs, I do believe. Uh, we the North. Um blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't follow basketball, but, uh, 
very, very excited about the Blue Jays this season. I am a, I played basketball and baseball and soccer growing up and I just can't follow basketball. I followed March Madness, especially the women's March Madness, which was a little bit strange. I'm not usually one that follows uh, the women's side of the NCAA, but Caitlin Clark this season was so fun to watch. Um, just, uh, yeah, anyways. So we are gonna get back here. Probably could have gotten away with one Botazookas, but we're gonna use two just to be on the safe side. Gonna throw some critters in that second to last smoke that I can never remember the name of what the heck you call that. And then we are gonna flare right about there, trying to shock some things, also trying to throw out some of that stuff right there. Missed that rocket launcher so we can shock it late. GBE tribe, so good. We lost more Zookas than I would have liked to. Uh, we lost one whole Zooka on that attack, which was a mistake by me. But rounding it out with, no, no casualties. Okay, so uh, I guess I just haven't upgraded that boat right there. Which boat is, okay, so final detail. You see that right there? Don't touch your reward boat, because when you do, look at this, just absolutely filling the storages. Don't touch that boat unless you absolutely, absolutely need it. I, as you clearly see, do need it. We're gonna get that next boat up to level 24. That will be helpful. Quick note, always make sure your boat is full before you upgrade it. That way you don't have to go to your task force and say, oh, sorry, I've got a boat upgrading. I can't attack with all boats. Gonna finish up getting this account slowly but surely upgrading those laser rangers. I do have a laser ranger video on deck. It is coming out soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos, do let me know. If you want to know more details about that, I've got a video about it. I've got a video about anything you could ever dream of, and if you can come up with something that I haven't made a video on, would love to hear it. That is going to be all for me, though. All things booming Friday, April the 4th. I shall talk to you soon. Thank you for coming in, liking and sharing, subscribing, clicking the bell, all those fun things. I'll talk to you soon. I'm Zedmon. Peace.